the Nut House Animal of the Week, the Falcon. Thank you. My new hobby is hunting with a falcon. And it's really good, because all you need is a falcon and a big, heavy glove. <laughs> but you need a heavy glove, though, because while you're waiting to hunt, the falcon loves to peck at your arm and sever your artery or something. <laughs> Anyway, you put the falcon up on the glove on your knuckles, and the favorite hunting position is like this. <laughs> you should keep the eyes covered at all times, so they love eyes. They'll go to <laughs> and then you give the command, hunt. And if he didn't just eat or something, he will go and hunt. <laughs> Don't look right away, though, because they... They do love eyes. <laughs> and then if he goes and hunts, you got to follow him real close because 
If he gets any game, he'll eat it right away. <laughs> he will leave the head, but he'll eat the eyes out of it. <laughs> he do love eyes. <laughs> and when you got your falcon at home and he gets hungry, he makes a real horrible screeching noise, you know, so you got to feed him right away to keep him quiet. And all they eat is dead rats. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard to get a dead rat right off the bat, you know. <laughs> So I took a lot of dead rats and froze them. <laughs> in the freezer, you know? And it's like a falcon's TV dinner. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> and another good thing about it, you can join a falcon club. <laughs> You're not already in one. <laughs> anyway, uh, and it's real good. You meet uh, about once a month, you know, and everybody comes up and says, Hmm, how's your bird? <laughs> and I love that. I just stand by the front door and wait till everybody asks me that. And I <laughs> say, oh, he's molting. <laughs> I say, oh, it's too bad. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Another thing, when you're hunting, you have to have a return whistle. Mine is, uh... And don't look up, because they love to fly real fast, right into your eyes. <laughs> Another thing, you can never hunt in female falcon-infested areas. Because them stud falcons are known to be curly-headed devils. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll fly away with anything, you know. One time I spent a lot of money and time on a real good stud falcon and I went hunting, said, hunt. <laughs> and he went up and he was just flying around with a lot of other birds and just rubbing up against them and hugging them and kissing them. <laughs> Having a good time, right? And he goes, <laughs> and just flew away, you know. And I went back to the club and I went in the bar and I said, geez. I lost my bird. <laughs> yeah, he's right. I think he flew away with a female falcon. I don't know. I can't tell the difference. Between them. How do you tell the difference? My friend said, Oh, I don't know. I don't even have no bird. I just come here to juice. <laughs> I love to watch all them guys come back with bloody eyes. <laughs> Uh, but then, just down at the end of the bar, a guy stood up and said, uh, Oh, I know, I'm a bird expert. I says, Oh, good. Well, how do you do it? How do you tell the difference? And he says, Well, the female falcon will only eat the female dead rat. And the male falcon will only eat the male dead rat. He says, Oh, that is good. <laughs> but how do you tell them rats apart? He <laughs> says, Oh, I don't know. I'm just a bird expert. <laughs> that only the unfortunate Hollywood marriages are the ones we hear about. The ones that work well year after year never seem to come to our attention. But we've taken a survey and we find that the really successful showbiz marriages are the ones in which both couples have learned to work together. Would things have been different if Liz had played opposite Eddie Fisher as Mark Antony? We think so. <laughs> Take, for instance, Gordon and Sheila McRae top-flight marriage because they have a top-flight act together. <laughs> Take the lunch. Take Frederick March and Florence Eldridge and so many others. Tonight, we'd like to show you just a few of the successful husband-wife teams that are giving the new family look to show business. Have concert trumpet player Ephraim Rheingold Clithia. <laughs> And his wife, Trudy Blatt, who wrestles alligators. <laughs> now here's lovely and talented Vanda Serpentino, the great pianist. And 
and her forklift operator husband, Clyde Schlinker. <laughs> forget, folks, that many marriages have actually been saved by both couples working together. Here's world-famous trickshot artist Shaky Tilton. <laughs> and his cultured seventh wife, <laughs> Jessica Springbrook, the noted English cantata soloist. It's all right, darling. I, I'm just grazed. <laughs> and let's not forget America's most famous show business union of hearts. Here's ballad singer Johnny Strip. If ever I would leave you. And his lovely wife, perhaps the nation's most renowned surrealist finger painter, Greenwich Margot. By you so. Love and career working beautifully together. And that's why they can say... Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Nuthouse presents a song about the famous art masterpiece, the fabulous Mona Lisa. For hundreds of years, men have been fascinated to and drawn by her mysterious smile. But no one has ever found out who she was or what secret that smile was hiding. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, at 5 o'clock, the museum is closing. This way out, please. The originals of these lovely copies can be obtained at the front desk. <laughs> I thought they'd never leave. Mona! 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 Look, she's still at it. She's driving me mad. Who is she? I have no idea. Who is that woman? Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. Who are you? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Why are you smiling? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> what are you hiding? <laughs> Plenty. You're terribly beautiful. I know it. <laughs> you seem so mysterious. Why do you think I'm smiling? What are you doing later? That's for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> we might be able to get together. I doubt it. <laughs> Come on, who are you? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Please, 
I don't want to. <laughs> Mind if I call you? I'm in a telephone book. <laughs> oh, what, 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 what did you say your name was again? That's in the telephone book, too. Oh. <laughs> you think I'm the most fantastic crazy you've ever seen in your entire life, and you want to be my slave, and you want to be mine, and you worship me, and adore me, and idolize me, and adore me, and worship me, and love me, don't you? Yes! <laughs> I had a sneer thing. Your pair is incredible. What a mystery. Just how many secrets do you have? One. There's no limit to the thing. And if your master can say so, have your brother or your daughter, stir up a bag of water. Everyone knows that motion picture scenes are not shot in the order in which we see them. That is, one sequence may be filmed during the early stages of production, while portions of that same scene may not be filmed until months later. Of course, the shots are edited together to make a smooth story. Now, this poses no problem to the star who looks pretty much the same all the time, but it does prove a disadvantage to the star who shall we say, lets herself go. <laughs> Tonight, we are privileged to see some preview footage from the long-awaited spectacle, Barge on the Nile, starring one of your favorite actresses of all time, who, unfortunately, uh, gained 229 pounds during production. <laughs> I must speak to thee alone, my queen. It is with sorrow that I say my legions go forth not in your name, O divine Nile queen, but rather for mine own land. I ask nothing of your legions. I ask only for your love. Command my heart, O general, not my people. <sighs> you have only to go to your outer chambers, Nile queen. There have I placed the scrolls that seal the eternal passions that brought this once proud leader of legions to the feet of a beautiful woman. I go for the scrolls, my dear. <laughs> I go beside you if you have lied. <laughs> Truth you speak, my love, from afar. <laughs> and the scrolls, too, speak of your burning hunger to hold me in your arms. <laughs> oh, to hear that from the slim gilt line of your delicate lips, my temptress. <laughs> Gladly would I fly to your arms, my general. <laughs> but are those not Roman ships that sail into the Nile Delta? <laughs> My suspicions, though, General, were misplaced not. My ships mean nothing to me, enchanting Nile Queen. They're all yours, as are my legions. I ask only that you let me carry thee to my chambers. Is thy tongue stronger than thy arms, O General? <laughs> you shall see the strength and purpose of Roman arms. Wait, my general. Carry me back for one last look at my throne room. Oh, uh, gladly would I carry thee. I would carry thee to thee. I would carry. I will. By the hand, I would gladly lead thee. <laughs> my beloved Rose Tennant. Oh! <laughs> to forsake it all in the name of love. I can look no longer. Quick, carry me to your chamber, my conqueror! <laughs> Talk first. Oh my God, this. <laughs> what could be more important, my love? To have a mint. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, no, let me sit and drink in the celestial contour of your delicate throat. Let me, let me <laughs> place mine hands to thine face, which is a triumph of the supreme sculptor. Let me tingle to the touch of thine tiny waistline. <laughs> let mine eyes feast on this spectacle of limbs which adorns no queen, save thou. <laughs> And the totality of such magnificence. <laughs> ah, it is you, Nile Queen, and Nile Woman, for thou art first a woman. <laughs> the biggest woman in the world. The biggest. <laughs> Come, let us tarry no longer, for love's fires have triumphed. We shall tarry not. Art thou ready? Yea, but tell me once more. Tell you what? You know, all the ends of the earth stuff. <laughs> With your help, my queen. Huh? Help. Lovely <laughs> <laughs> to the ends of the earth. congratulate you on making a wise decision. You're about to join the ranks of some of the world's top recording artists who've used these facilities when they sent a record home. Follow these instructions. Stand six inches from the microphone. Good. When the red light comes on, just speak in your normal voice. Knock them dead, kid. Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. I bet you never... Uh, hold it, soldier. Eddie, I don't care for the quality of this kid's voice. Uh, could you take out some of the highs and ride the gain on his bottom? <laughs> All right, soldier, let's try it again. Uh, hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. I'll wait for I the red light, kid. Oh, boy. <laughs> <clears throat> hello, Mom. <clears throat> this is your son, Alvin. I bet you never expected me to... Uh, cut, cut, cut. Eddie, we can't let him send a record like that back to his mother. Why don't you go up front and see if you can help him out? Hello there, soldier boy. <laughs> now, don't be frightened. I just want to help you. Now, we want to enunciate. Now, repeat after me. How, now, brown cow. How, now, brown cow. No. <laughs> How, now, brown cow. How now, brown cow? Oh, good. <laughs> okay, now that you've got it, watch the little red blinky. <laughs> Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. <laughs> I guess you never expected. That I... Eddie, are you still with us? The uh, kid Dixon's lousy, Harry. <laughs> You're telling me. I think we need Marty up front to help him out. You know, back him up a little. Marty, you want to go up front there, see if you can help him out? <laughs> Marty Cox, local 704. <laughs> Is this a record for your mother? Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'll just say a little introduction and I'll nod to you and you come in. You see now? The light isn't on. <laughs> Kids, right, Marty. <laughs> Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin, and Daddy, and Marty. Boy, I bet you never expected that I would be... I wonder if he sang it instead of talking it. <laughs> Can you sing, so? No, I can't sing. Sing it! No, I'm afraid. All right, further try. I'm I'm afraid. Afraid. Right, when the red light comes on, just sing what you were going to I'm say. I'm a listener. <laughs> Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. Boy. Eddie, Marty. 
Security. Now, we can't send a record like that to his mom, huh? I think we better bring him back here. Soldier, just follow Marty and Eddie. <laughs> Hello, soldier. <laughs> now, don't you worry. Before you leave here, you're going to have your record, right? All right, come on over here. Irv, Sammy, soldier needs a song to sing to his mother. Ask him. What do you have, soldier boy? You want a little waltz, a little folk, a little shot piece? Oh, no. All I want to say is, hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. Good. Da, 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 Alvin, do I do I do I Lena, soldier here's going to make a record. What have you got in the way of an album design? Oh, what is the title of the album, Mom? Uh, what is it, kid? I mean, album title. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got it. Here it is. Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. We'll use that, Lena. Hello, Mom. This is your son, Alvin. I'll have it ready in two minutes. Right. Yes. Oh, I'm not easy. Right. <laughs> well, soldier, do you like it? It's all for you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Here. Soldier, I want you to meet Laszlo Goulart. <laughs> Laz here is going to be your conductor. Oh, where's the band, Laz? Tommy, Tommy. Hey, come on! Come down here. Well, are you excited? Yes. Yeah. All right, we'll get started here in a few minutes. First of all, I want to use this mic here. It'll cover up the flaws in your voice, all right? Now, remember, don't pop your consonants. And I'll be right up there in old master control, you know, see if everything goes all right. Oh, as soon as we pass out the orchestrations to the band and the choir and... Hey, uh, oh, what's uh, up, Bert? We can't find a rhyme for Alvin, you know? Really? We've got a terrific set of lyrics here, but this Alvin rhyme is hanging us up. The line before the bridge ends in go. The soldier's name should be Joe, like go, Joe, do what? Joe, Joe, kid, you like the name Joe? Yeah, that's my brother's name. Good, call Judge Fraser, get him to change it. Please. Yeah. You want to phone Judge Fraser? Tell him we're going to change the name. All set, HR. Oh, beautiful, Lena. You've done it again. Right, fellas? No. There's just one thing. Uh, Sammy and Irv here are having a little trouble rhyming Elvin. Uh, Judge Fraser's going to change it to Joe. It'll have to read, Hello, Mom, this is your son, Joe. No dice. What do you mean? They're going to have to find a rhyme for Alvin. Alvin looks sensational on my phone. The rhymes with our far south, Harry, will get stale if we don't start cutting. Oh. Okay, lads. Lena, can you rhyme, Alvin? Oh. Do what you is that? the chorus to sing oohs or ahs in the introduction. Do what? That is what I'm trying to do. Why don't you make a patriotic thing out of this thing, and then we could bring in President Coolidge. Coolidge does not rhyme with Alvin. Coolidge's first name was Calvin. Calvin rhymes Please. with Alvin. Now, Judge Fraser, we're going to change Alvin to Calvin. Wait a minute. Then you've got to find a rhyme for Calvin. My fiddle section is becoming important. How about rhyming mother? I, mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I never mind that. <laughs> All right, lads, let's take it from the top. Places, everybody. Yeah. Oh, and Alvin, there's Alvin. Alvin? Alvin. <laughs> there you are. Now, remember, when the introduction is over, just step out here into the spotlight, all right? Oh, hit me with an 800, George. <laughs> Feet right there. Oh, no, don't tilt your head more than that, okay? <laughs> now, just when we begin, speak intimately to Mumsy like you would at home. You know? no, I, I call her mom. Tell her how you want to be back in that little vine-covered cottage. Oh, no, we live in an apartment. <laughs> and your own words already. After all, sweetie, it's your record. It was my quarter. <laughs> all right, everybody, quiet on the set. We're going to roll this for a tape. And Alvin, you come in right after the introduction. And remember... <laughs> Three, two, two, three, four, 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 two, four, four. <laughs>
This is your son, Alvin. Soldier, try. Sorry, folks, we're a little bit late. So good night from the nut house and God bless. You rotten freak! Thank you.